Well, Jim, another frustrating day on Saturday afternoon. Yeah, it has been, Dale. Obviously, we're all disappointed. Uh, all gone home and kicked the cat and wonder what on earth we've done wrong not to win that game. I think all we could do is ask Anthony um, to uh, make sure next time he uh, makes the goalposts wider, six inches wider, and, 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 of, and of course raises the bar six inches, and I'm sure we'd be quids in. Uh, but at the end of the day, yeah, thoroughly disappointing. He clearly got the players up for it as broadly under his short tenure so far, got the players going, but bitterly disappointed we haven't got a lot more points than, than, than we've currently got during his time. I mean, against Northampton, we played well the first half. I think we saw them out of sight. We should have got goals. Um, uh, had that happened, uh, I doubt if they would have scored goals and, and the heads would have gone down. But as it happens, that's a game we lost. Then, of course, we played Cheltenham, both teams going really well. Uh, we drew there and thoroughly deserved to win. And then you look at Swindon, we weren't at the races, matter of fact, we accept that, they were in our faces. They did everything that we actually set up to want to do to them, in all fairness, clearly a very good side. But when all said and done, uh, you know, we gifted them goals, had we not done that, if you'd have come out of that with a point, you'd have been delighted, albeit, uh, again, it didn't go our way. And then, again, at Carlisle, uh, you know, we saw them out of sight, we should have... You know, we should have had it in the net, we should have scored goals, we had real good chances again. But unfortunately only came away with the point. And then Scunny, as we just say, it's, it's heartbreaking to think that uh, we couldn't break our duck and get ourselves going. Because I'm pretty, so, pretty sure with this side, there's something in there, they just need to click. It would be nice if maybe a central defender could score a goal and take the pressure off the forwards or, you know, something from centre mid. You know, at the moment we're missing our Bollins and our Dizzlies. Um, yeah, the goals aren't coming across the park and, you know, it makes more and more pressure um, on the uh, two centre forwards uh, when they're playing um, to, to deliver. Um, so we've, we've, we've got to seek to address that and I'm pretty sure that uh, Anthony is working very, very hard on that. It's come across really well, I've got to say, uh, and clearly there's a cloud uh, been lifted during the time uh, that, he's, that he's been in charge. Um, and he's got the players going, but ultimately it is a uh, results-based business. He knows that, we know that, and we just need it to turn the corner and quickly. And this is the same team that's started the season so well. It is, yeah. I mean, the first 10 games, you really thought we were going to be in with a shout, certainly um, within the playoff area. Uh, I think it's important to um, explain to the fans that um, the philosophy at the beginning of the season, I've more or less explain this in the past but equally I'll add something to it this time in the <coughs> sense that um, we spent uh, the whole of the budget uh, with a view at the beginning of the season with a view to uh, one out one in in January now clearly um, the current predicament we're in um, there has to be some relaxation on that and we will be supporting a couple of three players to come in um, uh, in terms of salary cap management um, uh, currently the financial plan doesn't allow us to do that and in order to um, make that happen it'll probably be the case that I need to acquire some shares um, to, to bolster the budget um, to actually support Anthony, um, the manager, in, in whatever form um, to, to strengthen the squad. Um, obviously we need a left back now, with, with Seb, Seb departing. That's right. I mean, we've clearly not saved very much money with Seb going, we've had to compensate him to go. Um, but he hasn't been used all season, and it was unlikely that he would be used, so I think it's better for both parties. He was a good pro, he never put a foot wrong, he trained very hard, he was a lovely guy around the building. But I think this level, uh, this in-your-face football that we have in this country, maybe was just a little too physical for him uh, and I'm sure he'll go back and ply his trade over back in Sweden and, and uh, you know get himself going. We were speaking before there's a tremendous atmosphere at Cheapside now. There is, the cloud's been lifted, um, you know there is there is a really good strong group there. Um, I don't think we've got any share because in the camp uh, what we need is goals. Give us some confidence in that department, we'll get ourselves going and I think the form we saw in the first 10 games, um, you know, we could bring that back. Just needs a small adjustment to the squad, uh, and in that sense, as I mentioned, uh, we will support uh, a couple to three players coming in before we're forced to get any out. What's the latest on the on the manager? Um, 
We spoke uh, frankly um, with, with Anthony after the game, also Ben uh, was present as well as a board, we met them, very complimentary about the, the football game, uh, playing against Gunthorpe and, and, and the hardship obviously uh, of not coming out with three points, let alone one point, we thoroughly deserved it. Um, he speaks very, very well as does Ben, I think they're a potentially cracking team, uh, partnership um, that, that, that could do well. Obviously, they need a break. They've got to get some points. We know that, and you know, it's no, you know, there's no need to hide away from that. We spoke about that, frankly. Have we spoken to any prospective managers? As, as um, well? There's been there's been the odd conversation. At the end of the day, we've wanted to hold off because um, the cloud's been lifted, as we've mentioned. The team's playing well. Um, we're just not converting that into wins. Uh, we know that's got to happen soon. Um, we're absolutely rooting for Anthony and Ben. Uh, the board is, I think the fans are, I mean when all said and done, on Saturday against Scunthorpe, the players were clapped off. Uh, they want to see that kind of effort and endeavour. We've seen that for four of the five league games that, uh, that he's taken uh, so far, so everybody's rooting for him, but we do need um, a points tally. I mean we're seeing performances, in your face performances, that we haven't seen for a long time. I think we played some of the best football on Saturday, but if you can't score, can't carry on for too much longer. Mm. We accept that, everybody knows that, we spoke that through frankly, we're just wanting it to turn. Let's get around the corner, let's get some goals, let's get some confidence back in the side, get a little bit more playing support in there, uh, in the form that we've mentioned uh, in January. And, and you know, I believe that he can do it. Um, it's all there to be done. And there's some, there's some exciting things happening with our academy at the minute. Some good young players come through, coming through on the conveyor belt? Absolutely. The work that Neil's doing, and uh, I think in all fairness, his sabbatical away from the football club uh, has served us brilliantly. I think he's gone away, he's, he's, he's learned what happens elsewhere, and that's all now part of his armoury, and it's serving this football club brilliantly. brilliantly. We've got a conveyor of kids coming through, and that's a credit to him and the scheme and the setup. Doing really, really well. Any takeover news at the minute? Uh, in terms of takeover news, uh, <laughs> we're all fed up to our back teeth to be honest because we've been talking to two parties for too long in all fairness um, and the board cannot persist hanging around waiting for others uh, to take the project forward. Um, it's fair to say it's been business as usual, uh, we've not shortchanged um, or shirked any decisions that we've made uh, during this process. It's been going on for nearly two years now with one party and uh, about eight months, nine months with the second party. Um, we can't keep talking. Uh, I think uh, I'll be recommending to the board early in the new year that we actually put a deadline on it for when, if there isn't some progress, um, we, we actually ditch out and get on with business as usual in the context that we want to relocate and clearly um, if there isn't any serious movement from uh, Mr Shoots. Um, and, and there hasn't been for some weeks now, then uh, we want to pursue Freeman Street in earnest. We're not going to wait around much longer. We simply aren't. So I, I'll be making that proposal, I'm pretty sure, to the board early January. Um, you've obviously seen the rumours about Alan Hardy. Any truth in those? None whatsoever. He's not spoken to us. Um, he's certainly not involved in any of the parties that's interested in the football club. Um, you know, when all said and done, it's just a rumour that's got legs and they need cutting off. So in terms of the interested parties, uh, the club, myself, has moved to a position whereby um, we will not relinquish control straight away. Um, the reasons for that is um, there's been too many false dawns and deadlines missed in terms of proposals from both parties and in that context um, they both want to obviously enable development, relocation. Um, so in essence the developers, they're not born and bred locally, they don't have the same commitment and care um, to our knowledge um, that local people would have or the existing board. And in that context um, we've taken a step back and I've proposed to the board that um, both parties have an opportunity to join the board um, Invest, some, invest in some share stock and contribute some loans in, the, in accordance with the Article 14 of the Articles of Association. 
and um, the club would agree um, a, a, a development uh, agreement with them um, so an exclusivity arrangement where they then have an opportunity to drive relocation forward um, so we're de-risking basically handing the football club over to an entity that we don't know that much about but if they're prepared to make a commitment join the board substantial investment in shares similar to the number I have for instance which doesn't trigger an obligation um, put a loan in uh, in accordance with article 14 and there, thereafter have an opportunity, an exclusive opportunity to deliver relocation uh, alongside a brief that we've already worked up, i.e. what the club requires. You can't put a tin shed up, it's got to be a, a quality project. So if, if in effect, that, that de-risks uh, just handing it over, if they then can uh, demonstrate deliverability and wanted to acquire my shares, then there would be a basis for them to do that which would also trigger an obligation where they would have to then acquire under rule 9 of the takeover code um, they would then have to make an offer to the remaining shareholders if they wanted to sell or not um, so my feeling is that's a much much better way it's got board approval um, to ensure that we don't just duck out and we continue to work with uh, an interested party if they move forward in this direction um, in a way where we get the best of all worlds they commit to the football club financially they take forward uh, a relocation opportunity under an exclusivity agreement and also subject to uh, demonstrating that they've got the wherewithal and ability to relocate they then can acquire my shares under another agreement which, as I mentioned, triggers an obligation under Rule 9, whereby the rest of the shareholders would be offered at the same amount, which frankly is par value. Is this in light of what's happened at Barry and Macclesfield? Uh, I think it's in light of the fact that we spent a long time talking, and generally, when deadlines come and go, and things haven't been met, you start to get a little bit weary, um, and in this sense we've been talking for nearly two years to one party who clearly has a plan, wants to take it forward but ultimately hasn't met um, the elements uh, of their proposal uh, time and time again and of course the, 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 the latter party that's got involved to some degree um, enabled us to formulate this way forward um, which which now has got board's approval, board support and approval. Um, also, the Mariners Trust have been involved in these discussions um, with a view to um, that would be um, the same process now that would be on offer to Tom Schutz because the exclusivity arrangement he had um, has died. Um, you know, the clock's run down on that one. And personally, I feel much more comfortable that we work with the party we suck it and see, we gain a relationship, they understand how the football club functions, uh, you know, the working mechanisms, they're involved in the key decisions. Uh, frankly, if they do what I've said, which is acquire a block of shares similar to mine and put a loan in, um, um, I won't specify the number, but if they put a loan in, they'll effectively be the controlling party. Now, that doesn't mean uh, that they can just do what they want because you've got a board, just as I have, um, that ultimately has to manage the fiduciary responsibilities of the company. Um, so I, I feel I feel it's a really good way forward. Um, it means that we're not just handing it over to a party that could subject the football club to huge risk. Where are we with the new stadium then? What 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 can you tell us? There's no doubt, as I spoke before, um, that uh, there's a real opportunity to go to Freeman Street. Um, it's got political support, we know that. Um, I have to be careful, so I declare an interest here and now. I don't speak on behalf of the council in front of the camera. I'm speaking on behalf of the football club. Um, it's a matter of fact that the council understand uh, the benefits of what a football club can do in terms of regenerating an area. Uh, they want to see Freeman Street regenerated. Um, there's no doubt political support there. I think over and above that, there's additional support. And if we 
if, if, if we're left to our own devices, I'm pretty sure we can move fairly quickly on that project to start to put some wheels on the bus. Uh, in the absence of an interested party uh, taking that forward, as I say, sometime early January, I'll be proposing, proposing to the board that we cut ties, we talk no further, and actually we start ploughing our own furrow and planning for relocation within. Is Freeman Street a suitable site then from a club's point it, of view? It is. I mean, it's a constrained site. You're not going to be get all. Uh, you're not going to be able to get all of the training pitches there and so on, um, which is somewhat of a disappointment because there's a duplication of management and so on around the place. So you won't always see the best business case as a result of a split site, split operation. Uh, but nevertheless, in terms of uh, you know a, a fantastic stadium. Um, with maybe some conferencing facilities and so on, they can definitely fit within Freeman Street area and work very well for the club. Um, I'm sure you've seen the question on the fish here about um, your benign loans and and £250,000 is taken out of the club each year. Uh, at the end of the day, um, there hasn't been a director that's lost the money in this football club. Um, they've taken hundreds of thousands of pounds out when the club's been able to afford it. Um, the funds that's actually come in my direction of, uh, of uh, late in the recent accounts um, is purely as a result of surplus cash which cannot be used within the salary cap management. Now we have put forward a good budget at the beginning of this season and we committed to spend it all, risk all, take a chance and let's be quite honest ourselves and the fans thought actually we've got a cracking group together and we'd invested um, strongly and heavily. Um, there's no way any funds taken back in terms of loan repayments has hindered the playing budget. Now the fact of the matter is because of the position I've explained um, we are going to uh, lend some further support. Uh, it may require me to acquire some shares so that we qualify in terms of eligible income um, and then that will allow us to actually bring one, two, three players in with a view that you know there'll have to be some movement and we'd like to get some out to a, to a degree to compensate that cost um, but the last thing we want to do is, is leave uh, the manager in place with the existing team um, until the end of January when he's been trying to get players out they won't necessarily go until they see the light because some of them might have to go to conference to get themselves going again yeah. uh, they won't necessarily do that whilst the windows open and an opportunity to go to the um, uh, you know uh, stay within the league if you like um, so um, we're going to have to make some funds available, get these one or two, um, one, two, three additions um, that, that, that the manager suggests in. Uh, we accept that, we can see where we need to strengthen it, I'm sure the fans would agree uh, in his thinking. Um, so the facts of the matter is, any funds that's been repaid to me, um, just like other directors, each and every one's always been repaid in the past, every director, um, my loans are friendly. There's no interest on them whatsoever. There's no costs associated with them. And uh, they're friendly in the sense that um, I'm not going to call on them. I'm not calling on these funds. The surplus cash within the bank that can't be used to fund uh, the playing side of things. So why wouldn't I take them back? At the end of the day, if the wheels fall off the bus and the club needs additional investment, somewhat like we're talking about in the sense of we're prepared to put more funds in in January that will require me to acquire some more shares I'm not afraid of doing that I've never shirked in terms of funding the football club when there's been a problem or there's been an additional need but to just leave surplus cash sculling around in the bank that doesn't earn any money I'm sorry but if the club can repay a loan on that basis why shouldn't it it's really a discussion that should be a private matter and not continually probed at I'm not going to do bad by this football club and when it needs some help I'll give it the help. What would you like to say to the fans ahead of Christmas and New Year? I'd just like to say uh, it's been a difficult period uh, uh, you know obviously uh, we're all a bit heads up at the minute we all want better um, it was great to see uh, the bulk of the fans clap the players off on um, on Saturday um, it's been a difficult time we've gone a long time without scoring a goal and, and a long time without some decent results if we can get ourselves going, we've got games in hand, uh, the managers are quite confident that we can actually pick this up and really get a grip of uh, taking it forward this season to give us all the hope we need 
moving into next season because that's clearly our agenda now. We've got to pick it up. We've got to we've, we've got to come out this season uh, with the knowledge that actually we're building on last season um, for next season. Um, so what I'd like to say is please be patient. Please please be understanding. If we continue to support Anthony and he starts to get results, we can crack on in that direction.